action. Alrighty, so this is gonna be the first video that we do with the Dragon Realty thing, where we actually go over like what we're doing, um, kind of like a show, where we did what we did this week, what's going on, why we did it, the pros, the cons, the good, bad, and the ugly. We could call it the real estate, good, bad, and the ugly show. Not a bad idea. Right, it's kind of good. Um, all right, so first things first though, disclaimer, we are not real estate professionals in any way, so we're not attorneys, we're not um, agents, financial advisors, so anything you hear here, best to research on it on your own, because all it is is just our accounts and pros and cons. And not construction it. workers. Oh, we're not construction workers either. We're not private, we're not, you know, we have no licenses in construction. We just do it. And sometimes good and sometimes we learn, which is also good. Yeah. All right, so um, this is my wife, Elise. And she works a lot in, in, inside of it, doing like the purchasing of the property and working with the lenders and the real estate engine and blah, blah, blah. Property my brother manager. Dewey, um, he comes down and helps us with the houses and was involved with this kind of since from the beginning. Oh, thanks for putting that in there. Yeah. I, I said from the beginning. <laughs> I just messed with you. Oh, yeah, okay. no, uh, you kind of fell in this together kind of a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Yep. So. He started running out of house back in Michigan, and I think well, it was he was before you. Oh, maybe. I think it was. Well, no, that's okay. Fine. He just <laughs> to run the house. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> he ran out of his house in Michigan. Um, while he was doing that, I was in the military, desperately seeking a way to get out and not have to be in that sort of position again. You know. Um, and so I started like just digging into real estate a crap ton and studying and writing everything down and practicing and trying to figure it out. And then I got into rental houses. Um, our first house was a, just a, a purchase and rent. So we purchased it. It was a small 1200 square foot house with a little garage and we dropped into it for six months while we were living on a, at a, at a base. And then we got out of it and left and rented it out. That was about it. Really simple, but it worked. And we made a little bit of cash flow, like literally 150 bucks a month. Not a lot, <laughs> but it was what it was. It got us in the game. And that's all that really matters. Um, yeah. So what we wanted to go over today was kind of like what we've been doing. Just talking about like our, our walk through the journey of real estate that got us to where we are now and why, what we're doing now. So I will, what was it? Let me see. So yeah, after we got Geronimo, which is the house that we got, during that first period of time we were at Ford Sill. Um, we went to Korea and we kept working on what we were gonna do when we got back because we wanted to jump into this real estate thing like we both beat when we got back. Um, we wanted to remodel properties and rent them out. Um, we, there's a huge game plan that goes with that, but yeah. <laughs> um, Dewey here, he was... Um, well, so... The first one, the first house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. He's the one that well, purchased the first house because I didn't have the money. Yeah, but he had the money and I had the the know how. So he allowed me to play with his money and and know how and and take the chance of just losing a lot of money for him. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd already uh, like you said he had his Geronimo house. I, I he was the, mostly the one behind us getting things rolling. But uh, we both found a house. I had a house in in Michigan that I. Put together for me and my wife to live in for a little while uh long story short it turned into just a rental because we ended up moving west uh yeah so then he gets back from korea and we decided to uh use the money i'd invested into things to uh to do the real estate thing so yeah I threw it on him to kind of put something together for us yeah and uh so far it's working out pretty good with the real good one. yeah he, uh, he said, all right, Roy, he said, you keep telling me you can do good things with this. And so I said, yeah, we'll find a house, we'll flip it, and we'll make rental money off of it. So we ended up doing that. Um, he came down and worked periodically on the property, um, and I did. And it took probably all of $36,000 that you had. It did, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it pretty much between that. I mean, I used some of that for traveling. Um, I used some of that for the expenses while I was here and stuff. But for the most part, a lot of that was used for... Um, the the down payment and the remodel, yeah, and, and just the time um, um, paying the mortgage when we weren't renting it, you know, to get it going yeah. and stuff like that. 
the holding the holding cost and everything like that. So yeah, most of that was used up. I think I think it was all gone by the time we were done. But it was. We <laughs> skated through on the dime. I think you might have had five hundred dollars here in council. <laughs> still had five hundred dollars, which I think I left in there. Yes. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I left yes. it in there even after we put everything into the house. Uh but it, it worked out really well and it's still working out well. Yeah. So for thirty six for thirty six thousand dollars you got a house that cash flowed about what, nine hundred bucks a month when you finished it? Eight hundred. It was it was right around eight hundred bucks a month uh in cash flow when we when we this first initial year we Yeah, we so that's it. net, not gross. Yeah. So after all expenses, that's what he pocketed. Yep, yep. So it yeah. cash flowed really well, which I mean, you know, if you do any sort of real estate or anything you would you'd realize that's pretty pretty good. Pretty good cash flow from our first house. Oh yeah. Um, there was definitely a lot of that was <coughs> research in the area, research in the property. Yeah, and, so that's uh, about a 25% return. So at every year, he's getting about 25% back of what he put into it. Yeah. So that means a little over four years, he got all his money back and then some. And then it just builds from there. So it's kind of like getting the house. The house holds its value, which it did gain a lot of value. It, uh, what is it, $80,000 worth of value? It was pretty substantial, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it went up a lot. But we yeah. got a, we definitely got a decent deal on the property. Yeah. But it it was the right neighborhood and the right time and in the the market and yeah it yeah definitely which is funny because equity. yeah and we walked into that one and we went in to see the house and the first thing the property uh, the real estate agent said was I don't know if you guys want this one and then the first thing my wife said was I didn't want it I don't want it <laughs> <laughs> and so and then I said it's perfect. <laughs> And it worked out great. It brings in tons of cash flow and it gained tons of equity. And now it's banking. Um, and then we got my property, which actually we're sitting in right now because yes. we we're slowly remodeling it over the course of the year while forever. we're living here. Forever. <laughs> we're just going to live here for forever, half remodeled yes. while we work on other properties. So, yeah. Um, oh, all right. So that was kind of like the backstory. Now, um, what we're doing now is something much grander. We're stepping into this new thing where we're bringing in real estate investors. Um, we're bringing in not only working people, class people that are investing by putting in their time to remodel and flip the properties, um, but we're bringing in people that invest their money. Um, and this is in an infomercial. That's, we're, I'm just saying how we're doing it right now. Um, but yeah, so we have investors right now. Um, a lot of them are just really ordinary people. They, they kind of seen how we did and they want to, and we want to bring them in because now we're starting to do this thing where we want it to be more than just real estate. We're making pretty good off of all our properties so far, but we want it to be more than that. We want to give a first hand view of how we do from the beginning to the, to the top or to the bottom. We might suck and lose yeah. everything. Yeah. No sugar coating. Just no sugar coating. The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. Yep. Where we lost money, where we gained money so far. So far it's been gain. It's good. So far, it's been game. It's, it's, it's been fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we want to give the good, the bad, and the ugly, hopefully encourage people to get involved too. And not only just that, oh man, I don't have enough money to buy a property, but find out all the different ways that you could do real estate without having any money. You can do it without any money. Yeah. Sometimes it's just grouping together to buy a house um, and put in an LLC and buy it that way to make money, to get your start going. Or sometimes it's getting private investors, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we'll go over a lot more of that in another period of time. Um, but the emphasis of this show that we're gonna be doing every week is just our, the good, the bad, and the ugly of how that week went, what we did, what we did good at, what failures we had, or learning experiences we had, um, and how we figured out how to fix the problems we come across or how to fix the hurdles we come across. So that way you guys can have a little bit of a, a knowledge learning every week, a little bit of a um, encouragement yeah. And not only that, but, you know, just gaining through us, through our wins and losses. Uh, oh, and to facto, I don't have to explain to everybody that I'm working with as far as real estate investors what I'm doing all the time. Because I get a lot of questions like, so why is that? And then I spend like explaining it all and teaching it all, which I love doing. And that's part of this. I want to teach everybody that, that wants to get involved and is an investor in us how to do it as well so they can expand from here. But at the same time, this makes it a lot quicker and easier to get it to everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's 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 what we're what what our focus is. 
right? So we're focusing on helping other people getting involved in investing, flipping these properties and, and making them cash flow. Um, what did we do? Oh, so kind of a goal that we have, we really want to do about nine houses this year. That's our goal. Now, of course, we want our goal to be high. So we reach, reach high, but that's, that's what we're looking for right now. That's your goal. That's my <laughs> goal. It's his, it's his goal, but like I said, you want to shoot high and at the end, if we even come out with eight or seven houses as a win, um, but let's shoot for nine. Let's go for nine. Let's go for 10. Yeah. Go for 10. As many as we can get yeah. in the right market at the yeah. right time. And I'm sure if you guys watched some of my prior videos, you know what kind of equity we hold in these properties and the ways that we mitigate risk. So we're not gonna change anything we're doing. We're gonna do the same exact way. And if we can mitigate risk like we've been doing and we can grow and we can gain equity and cash flow, we can see how much, like we, we, where we can go. And you guys will be able to see that too. Um, the next thing we wanna do is something kind of exciting too. So we want you guys to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. We want you to know how the, how the real estate business is going and how fast it grows or doesn't grow. And so we're going to give you guys updates on what we're doing, how much cash flows came in, issues we run into, how much money it's made, how much we've grown. And then also we're doing a competition. We thought it'd be kind of cool. We're gonna have a competition with all the investors or all the investors that are willing to participate in the property to see who can gain the, much mo the most money by the end of the year. We're gonna start out with the first property we did, which almost everyone's involved in that. And we're gonna see how much money one of our investors can make by the end of the year. And whoever makes the most money is gonna win $1,000. So it's kind of like a little cash prize at the end, a little bit of incentive, um, but also uh, it's gonna show you who does well, who doesn't do so well, um, how they did well, how they didn't do so well, why, why they did what they did to get what they got, and dit dot get dot bit dot bit. So, that's <laughs> good. And, gonna, and gonna you say. and I are not involved in the contest. Yes. So we're not involved because that's kind of like a he's involved. Because <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I'm, I'm I'm still working on being more involved in the business, but I'm still right now at this, at this point just an investor and uh, a little more than an investor sometimes when I can be. So yeah. Um, yep. But yep. So he comes down periodically and so yeah, contest. as a little bit of it, you know, he works right now, he works full time and he's got weeks off. Sometimes he makes it down. Sometimes he doesn't, puts a little labor in, <clears throat> puts money in. How does he do it? Where is he at financially? How does he save money? Um, and then you might have other people like, uh, my parents are both involved, heavily involved. Um, and they come down and they work with us for months working on a property. Now they might have a certain amount of money that they put into the property. Or, or maybe they put a lot more work into the property, which also gains them value <clears throat> and ownership into the property's cash flow. Um, then you just have people that are just sending us cash and sending us money to purchase and remodel the properties. So you're going to be able to see. And that gets them back their equity. And that gets them back their equity. Yep. So it's kind of like a big tug of war. Whoever does the most or invests the most as this project goes through will gain that much value of the property. Um, and we don't gain any more value than anyone else. We're on the same scale. So we might have started it and we might have the company that, that's doing the, the uh, things, but we, we're only gaining the same amount of value because we're not really trying to like be on top of the movement. We're just trying to be with the movement. Everybody earns at the same rate. Yes. Yep. And everybody can earn. Yep. Anybody can. And so there are three different, the few different ways that we do this are, so within the business, we have people that work for us and do the labor aspect which gains them equity in the property, whether that's on the weekends or full-time, if they can swing it or part-time. Um, then we have people who invest money. Then we have people who find us properties. They gain value and, and cash from the property and, or sorry, ec not equity, <laughs> but um, money from the property. And then we have people that, did I mention work? Oh, I got, you know, I, I got totally lost. But, but we have people that, that. that invest and work at the same time. Well. Yes, we have investors yeah. and workers. Yep. And, people and, who do both. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's the other one. Um, actually uh, closing the deal. Yeah. Yeah. So you might find a property and bring it to us. Uh oh, and not to freak anybody out that's already worked with us. We're adjust as we go. So each one of our contracts is a little bit different. Our last contract said that if you find a property uh, currently, that you can gain equity in that property. Well, that's how we did it, but we wanted to break it up a little bit more. If you find the property, you gain this much. And if you actually close on the property, you're gonna get another section of amount of money. 
So we're going to split that into two. So we're not lying. We're just moving forward and adjusting. It's going to be a lot of this process. It's just, and that's with every part of this, whether it's the remodel or whether it's the, the actual business itself, is adjust our ways to make them as efficient as possible and as fair as possible. And yeah, our 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 methods and our our movement forward is going to be adjust and adapt and learn. Mm -hmm. It's a lot about the micro changes. So when I first wanted to get into real estate, I wanted to buy one house at every base I worked at, which you work at a base for roughly three to four years. So in the course of my 20 <laughs> years in the military, two years. yeah, normally two years. In the course of the military, I wanted to own, at the end of my time period, when I retired out of the military, I wanted to own five to six houses um, and have them partially paid down making cash flow. Well, that turned into this by making micro changes along the way. We didn't just say one day, you know what, instead of that plan, let's find, purchase, remodel, purchase at a good price, refinance, pull cash out, lend, commercial <laughs> loans. Like we didn't go into all of that right off the back. That was a learning process and stepping stones. It just kind of came over a long period of time. So it's micro steps towards your goal, not a complete life changes. A lot quicker than some people's periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. But, but part of that's you, just... you learn very quickly. Yeah. yeah. That's well, true. A lot of that comes with just um, a lot of people lag and, and they don't, I would say jump they the gun. Do they, they, don't, they don't take the first step. Yeah. Well, I mean, just get in there and get after it, you know, just take the first step and figure it out. That's what where we started, I guess. Just yeah. was taking the first step and, and getting going. But some people, a lot of people talk and a lot of people want to do it, but a lot of people just don't ever take the first step. Yeah. And that's kind of why we're doing this YouTube channel. And that's kind of why we're doing the real estate comp business. Because in your, all honesty, it's kind of weird. We could, we have, personally, currently, we have funding to purchase properties. Um, we can get funding to remodel properties, and it all comes at a bank loan. Um, and then that bank loan's at a certain rate. So technically, we don't really necessarily need investors, but it's not about what we need and about what we want. For us, it's about what we're providing back. We're trying to get people involved who normally wouldn't take that step to get involved. Um, also... We are like, so you guys have ever seen Bigger Pockets? Bigger Pockets is uh, one of the largest real estate investing um, podcasts, um, YouTube channels are huge. Um, we want to try to maybe take it a step further. And instead of just interviewing people that have done it, we want to show you the, the doing of it. And we also want to encourage people by seeing us do our, go work through our failures and our accomplishments to take the next step. Cause that's the hardest part. Nobody ever takes the next step. Okay. Yep. Um, we want to do a little bit of a of a of a pop of a of a thing where we, from here on out, we're gonna have more in the videos as far as like segmented. Um, we are going to do a subject that we teach on. We're going to do what happened that week, good, bad, other. We're going to do um, the competition, how it's working, who's doing what, and how, why, what thing people have done to be better, and we're going to promote a book. Not promote, really. We're just going to bring recommend. up a book, recommend a book for everything. Because really, honestly, it, there's two things that are involved in real estate. And they're the only two things you need. You need to learn, keep studying, and keep practicing the methods. And then you need to just do it. So it's like grit and knowledge. And if you have grit and knowledge, you don't need money. You just need to do it. And that's what nobody really understands. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't have enough money for the first house, so I found my brother, and he was willing to let us gamble with his money. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, before we bought the house, we we both fell into our own first houses, and we're like, I mean, this is this could work, this can this can yeah. happen, we can make this work, you know. So I mean, yeah. I guess our first step wasn't even our first house because we didn't plan on it per se. Yeah, we planned on having a house to live in. Well, well I planned on it. He didn't. I didn't so yeah, so he took the first step. He got he had the first house that he planned on actually <laughs> turned into yeah. an investment property. But yeah, after that, it was uh, like, okay, let's take the next step. Let's figure out, you know, let's take the first step together yeah. on, a, on a property, um, which is, I mean, in a way that practice leading up to having investors and everything like that, you know, we mm -hmm. pooled, pooled our, the knowledge and the money together um, and, and just kind of got our feet wet by trial and error and just figure it out. Yeah. So we talked that we like jumped in, but we also researched the yeah. crap out of it. We I mean, researched the property a ton yeah. and we researched all the costs. And we, and so 
a lot of studying, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of research, but we did just jump in. A lot of phone calls and a lot of text messages since we're, what, states apart, three states apart. Yeah. yeah. A lot of two o'clock in the morning, I'm talking to my brother on the phone while I'm at, <laughs> not at work. <laughs> a lot of that. You yeah. know, just because, I mean, it was, I mean, it, I mean, I wouldn't say it was, it wasn't scary, but it was definitely, uh, it was a big old undertaking, I guess, you know. Yeah. It feels like a huge step. Yeah. The funny thing is, is, it feels it's, like a huge step, and then the the second and third and fourth house and are like, yeah, when we bend the next one and, tomorrow. And, and, All right, cool. We're gonna close that one tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, no problem. All right. What do you think it'll be remodeled? Man, three months, and then it'll cash flow a lot. Yeah, and you know, it <laughs> becomes <laughs> super simple. Just today we we're in we we're in the in the Rotherwood we're going in there just doing a couple updates in between renters, and we're like, yeah, it was a year. This it was over a year ago that we were in here remodeling. Yes, and we were getting it fixed up. It it doesn't feel like that time flew, and we kind of I would say forgot about the property, but. It was just their cash flowing. The way we do it, we 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 fix and forget. So we obviously monitor and we vet our, our property manager pretty well before we got her, Lori Canada. She's amazing, and yeah. so we vetted her really well. Uh, got a lot of like people talked a lot highly of her, um, and then we got a hold of her. Um, but at the same time, like once we do these properties, like we really ever have to go back to them. No. Yeah. Yeah. Our was, first property has the one that we actually paid a bit more for because we needed a finished house at that specific time. Um, that one has turned over tenants three times now. And the only thing that we've ever had to do was send a handyman in to uh, have them touch a paint. And we flipped over tenants three times. Yeah. Right location. We haven't had anybody yet tear up one of our homes. Now, Michigan, yeah. usually you have somebody destroy your house every rent. Yeah. You gotta do a full remodel every, at the end of every renter if we, they paid. We knew a few landlords growing up and, and that was the name of the game was was they have a renter for a year or two. And the good ones for them were the ones that were in there for like five years and they only had to remodel it every five years when they destroyed yeah. it. But they have a that renter. Was a good renter. renter. For, for a month or two, or not a month or two, a year or two, and they'd have to go in and do a, a remodel. They'd have to re fix drywall, you know? Yes. Yeah. Joe Blow punched holes in the walls, you know? Yep. Uh, burn the cat in the basement. Burn the cat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be a little rough, but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> That'd be pretty rough. Yeah, no. Not hating on Michigan, but it's full of slum rats. Not, not people watching this. Not everybody we're talking about in Michigan is slum rats. No, just, no. Just there, there, is, there is a lot, maybe it's because we grew up there. Nasty, dirty. Slummy rats. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody there is doing rats. I make it up. <laughs> but uh, most there's, people there's... watching this initially are people friends from Michigan. Friends so. from Michigan. Hi. So uh, we all we love all you guys. We like all you guys from Michigan. It's just that we would never own uh, a, a, a an rental amount of there. rental houses there. I'm I have one there right now. Um, once that one's gone, once I take care of it and, and, and it doesn't exist anymore, I mean, as long as there's a renter in it and it's renting, that's fine. I trust the renter in there. Yeah, yeah one. Um, but once that's over and done with, it's not getting ready to get. It's going to be sold, and I'm going to invest into a better area that I can trust. Yeah, and somewhere that I just I have a little more confidence in in uh, in the longevity of the property and less yep. maintenance. Yes, a lot less maintenance, a lot less, maintenance, lot less hassle. Anyway, so yes. um, last thing we're going to go over is just the book, and this is going to be maybe some people actually probably a lot of people haven't heard of the book because we're maybe. used to listening to people that talk about that right time. maybe people that we, we know that haven't heard of it but yeah so we're actually used to listening to like podcasts and youtube videos and learning through a lot of like youtube college on this information and they always talk about the same first book for everybody so we feel like it's always known by everybody but it's no not so it's rich dad poor dad written by robert kiyosaki and it's just the book that turns everyone on to doing something about real estate and about investing in, in, in general. And about saving, about everything. Saving. Budgeting. It's, it's got everything Getting in Getting your one. finances in order. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it's a motivator. It's a, it's a go-getter book. It's, yeah. Um, whenever you listen to something and they're recommending a book, they're always like, hey, so we'd recommend the book that did the most for us being Rich Dad, Pad, Dad Poor Dad. But everybody does that. So we're going to recommend a different book this time. Because everybody, if they would, 90% of everybody would recommend that book first because it, for some reason it just turns people on to real estate and investing. It just happens. A lot of people read it and they say it clicks. And all of a sudden, now they're making money, doing great. 
and getting out of bad situations. And the book is life. available on YouTube. You don't actually have to read it. You can listen to it's, it. It's yeah. on Spotify. A lot of these books yeah. have been um, put out on, on YouTube by the producers to just, at this point, since it's been around for so long, um, let people just get at it. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that has to be purchased at a store. And it's, it's something, I mean, I can't remember exactly the book length if you listen to the audio, but it's not terribly long. You can... Hours. You can hammer it out. You can listen to that book and get it, get it listened, get finish the whole book in. I think it's maybe four hours, maybe at most maybe five six four. hours. So you got a long drive, you got a trip. That's what I do. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of time to listen to books uh, between family, between work, and everything. But if I got to drive, if I got a couple hours in a, in a, in a on a trip, slap on an audiobook, listen to it, and then you never know what it might, how, how it might change you in a, in a way, you know. Oh yeah. It, I have, time I listen to a book like that. Oof. I feel like I've morphed over the last two few years that I because I've probably read over thirty five books now in the course of this year, and I think I've just continually morphed as I've learned different things from different books. So it's it's really important. Um, yeah, but oh, so yeah, I don't read a single book. I'm lazy. <laughs> so if you know out there, you're like, I don't like to read. Well, yeah, you don't have to read. It's a waste of my time, too. No, I listen to audio books, and I learn what I'm doing. I do, I learn, I maximize my time, because I don't have a ton of time to not maximize it anymore. Best time to read a book is while you're driving. Yeah. Put that book up there. And just, <laughs> just Make sure you got one eye on just the road, go. one eye on the book. You don't know. Yeah. No. <laughs> audio books. What you do is every four seconds, book, road. Yeah. Uh, road. Yeah, friend. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, friend. Audiobooks are amazing because I'm not a reader God, either. God, friend, road, book, God, friend, road, hell. Because if you kill somebody like that, you're probably. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> audiobooks are amazing. You can't, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't read them if I didn't have audiobooks. And now that I've heard audiobooks, I'm, I'd probably start reading the books if I had to. Because uh, if you're not a reader, It'll get you into the books, and honestly, less less focusing on the, the book itself and just listening to it. To me, I, mm -hmm. I I take a lot more to heart. I can sit there instead of reading the book and stopping reading the book and doing some some math, you know, to, to help me see the whole process. You know, whether it's a personal yeah. property that we have, or it's mm -hmm. like you know something I have in mind while listening to the book that I, I thought of. Instead of stopping reading the book to do the math, keep listening to the book and. Because you can keep rolling and keep your brain working the whole time and stuff. Uh, yeah, I like. You kind of just developed your your plan while you listen to these things, and it, you morph into your like your future goals. Um, but well, we're gonna we're gonna get out of here because it's probably been quite a while. Um, but also, I have a list of twenty five recommended books on our Facebook page. It's pinned um, to the top. It's pinned to the top. Uh, I have a bunch of videos that we've already done, mostly with just me, like talking about uh, different aspects of real estate investing and how to do it. Um, and then we're just going to pull out one of these videos every week. They're going to have a lot more content in it. This was just an intro. All right. Well, hey, see you next time. And now the awkward fade where we all sit around while.